Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 210. This episode is with the talented ray of sunshine known as Sarah Cravens. So I took an auditioning class with her a while back, and she was so great, I just had to get to know her better. And let me tell you, she is a blast. In this episode, we talk about her growing up playing basketball, her musical comedy duo Sarah and Andrew, working on The Young and the Restless, booking her first game, which was a little game called uh, Halo, might have heard of it, her audition for Skids and Big City Greens, singing in a Slaughter cover band, her deep love of Lionel Richie, and so much more. So buckle up and put your helmets on for a good time, friends. Without further ado, let's jump into this. Please enjoy this episode of The Interesting Podcast, number 210, with Sarah Cravens. Theme song time. I'm good. How's the view from Cloud Nine Grizzlies edition? Oh my god, I'm dying. Right? I'm, I, I'm like, I, I, like, I'm a super fan. So yeah. I'm like, I, I'm nervous because I'm like, I am like, I'm a super fan. I watch all their games, and so I'm like, I, I don't know how I'm gonna function and do <laughs> my job when I'm like, you know. Uh, uh, definitely going to be, uh, uh, just in awe the whole time, but I'm, uh, I'm so stoked and, and I, I so, so lucky. Oh my God. That's one of those gigs where you're like, I have to say yes. But then as soon as you do, you're like, what have I done? Oh, I know. I know. And I just was like, you know, I, it, it being able to, I think that that's the thing of like being able to, to, um, like meld, my yeah. two loves, like literally, like I, I, I played basketball as a kid, but I, I never uh, grew like, uh, uh, you know, tall. Sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> I never uh, grew. Period. <laughs> I, I never grew. Period. So, um, while I was very good in fourth grade, um, it, you know, I played through high school, but like I, I wasn't, you, you know, I, I didn't grow anymore. So, uh, sure. It, but so, but I've been a lifelong basketball fan, and so then getting to like MC for my favorite NBA team, what? and now it's like, oh my god, coming together like my love of voiceover and my love of the Grizzlies, and I just, oh, I can't, I can't deal with it. Yeah, what is your life? These are one of I those moments. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm so because <laughs> you're you're from you're from Tennessee. What part? Yeah, so I'm from Cookville, um, which is uh, about an hour outside of Nashville. Mm -hmm. um, so, so Memphis, we're I'm Middle Tennessee. Memphis is West Tennessee. Um, but you know, we, I, you know how it is when you're you're from a place like those are your teams. You're diehard, right? Like, that's your the, those are your people, and you you support them. And uh, yeah, we didn't. Um, when did we get so they were they were we didn't even have an NBA team um when I was a kid like we we got the Grizzlies um let me see what year did the Grizzlies move to Memphis yeah 2001 so like oh, wow literally not into like my whole childhood we you know I I uh <laughs> but because I'm so young uh I I graduated <laughs> high school in 2001 and so then you know, we didn't have an NBA team till then. And so it was so exciting for us. And then it was just like, okay, these are our guys. This is it. I just found the reason I'm going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm excited to talk to you as well, because outside of myself and my brother, I don't think I know anyone else who grew up playing in trash cans for fun. Oh, my goodness. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, welcome to the club. Like, right. It's a it's a wonderful club of us that um oh yeah my right? brother and I uh, we would get like 
I, like, come on. This is this is the stuff where I'm like, man, we do need to take screens away from people. Yeah. Because we, <laughs> you know, we were just like, we had to fill the days. And so it would be like, you know, a hot summer day in Tennessee. And we'd go out and we'd like, you know, turn the hose on mm-hmm. and like fill up the trash can. Yeah. You know, the, and that would be it. We'd play in trash cans. So, uh, yeah, good, good times in Tennessee. I like to call them personal pools. <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> you each get your own. It's not hot. If you give it time, it will get hot. But, uh, you know, the, it's creativity. That's what you do. I know. I, I, that makes me sad for, for kids growing up now, you know, yeah. like, uh, uh I, I feel like there's it's still there. I'm not saying there's no creativity. That's not done. Right. <laughs> they, kids are kids are creative, but I think there's a special kind of creativity that comes from like being bored. Agreed. You know? and, yeah. and, and we were so we were so bored and it was like we didn't have computers or, or or you know, cell phones or whatever. And so we, you know, that's when we would build stupid stuff in the backyard and get in trash cans yeah (laughs) they're right there (laughs) yeah it's one of the i I call it the hidden gift of poverty (laughs) oh imagination (laughs) and that is the other thing too i'm like i i really whenever i like you know talk to high schoolers or do panels or anything i'm Mm -hmm. like y'all i we did not have money. Like I, yep. I did not. And, and it's one of the biggest like blessings because we, I didn't know we didn't have money. Right. I, I, didn't, I didn't know. Like we were, you know, I, I'm very, uh, uh, my parents are the coolest and greatest people. Yeah. And like, we didn't know we, I mean, we always, we always had food. We always had a place to live. So I'm, I'm very thankful, but you know, we didn't have extra, we didn't go on vacations. We didn't do, you know, fancy stuff ever. Yeah. Um, and it was awesome because it was like, I feel like you get this. What did you, what did you call? I love how you said the like <laughs> poverty gives you such an imagination. Like yes. it, does. <laughs> it right? really does. And then you're like, you know, um, well equipped to handle whatever situation comes along because you're like, oh, well, I'm not used to doing things in yeah. a luxurious way. So. <laughs> I still get uncomfortable if there's more than one fork. I was like, I don't, I'm not the guy. Just, know, just, I, just point. <laughs> I just don't know. I don't. And then, oh, the other thing, like with place setting, like, you know, where you're like, oh, uncomfortable with one fork. I'm uncomfortable when they take it away after a course and like bring another one. I'm like, I can use the same fork. Oh, that yeah. <laughs> no need to do extra dishes. I I can, I promise you, it's not going to gross me out to use the same fork that I just ate a salad with yep. to eat the main course. Like, well, and then I can also eat the dessert with it. I don't, I don't need to right? switch them out. It Don't still works. It. Yeah, <laughs> totally works. I licked off the 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 remaining food from the other part. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm right there with you. And it, I find that also if you grow up without, if if you can grow as a human being from it, obviously, uh, yeah. you have this like built in gratitude for like everything. Everything. Because you're like, oh, I'm not hungry right now. Yeah. But I know what it's like to be. This food tastes amazing. Yes. It's, a, it's a nice perspective. Oh, I I love it. I think it's, you know, um, I I I don't I, I I would love for our country to get to a place where like we we uh we even out this extreme wealth and extreme poverty yeah. because extremes in any any uh direction uh do not serve anyone. Agreed. Uh, yeah. And I, I just think, you know, if you if we all just had enough to 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 live and and eat and and learn, like everyone would be so much happier. Like right. just all the excess is doesn't make people happier. It really doesn't. It's true. It's true. And that's what you learn from trash cans. <laughs> <I> know, yeah. <laughs> when you write a book, Sarah, <laughs> wisdom from trash cans. Oh, thank you. I'm here. Oh, I'm here for you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. that is so fun. I, really, I really do like it. Um, it right? It's, it's pretty me. good. It's pretty good, man. <laughs>
So what what kind of stuff were you into growing up? You said you played basketball. I played basketball. Um, I was really into summer camp. I loved Ooh. I loved summer camp. Um, and it was one of those like uh, you know, where it was like a week long. Um, mm -hmm. but uh, and it was split up into to different weeks. Um, like there was like nine weeks of the summer, and I would try to go as many weeks as I possibly could. Cool. Um, and so I had my like summer camp besties um who i would you know all of us lived in different like cities in tennessee so we didn't you know it's not like we went to school together and we didn't see each other the whole year but we'd see each other every summer and like no joke uh there are a handful of my summer camp friends that i am still like so close to to cool. this day. um because you know you you really when when your and it you know back then again like we didn't we didn't have cell phones so it was like you know it's a bunch of kids out out in the wilderness together um just like figuring out stuff to do every day and yeah. so you, you really get you 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 have good hangout time with people you know because mm -hmm. um, we're not all like looking at our phones all the time so yeah those are like special special people i i love my my mid-south summer camp crew so much yeah that's so cool and like yeah. ba barely supervised children that's where the good stuff is oh yeah you know that's oh, when yeah. you're like i'm in the woods and i don't know where i'm at perfect <laughs> yeah and you know like we were so i think about it now and i'm like man we were such good kids like we were <laughs> you know like we would we would make up stupid we'd make up stupid songs and we'd make up stupid skits and we'd you know do stuff to make each other laugh or and and uh you know again so weird i never thought i'd be at the point to talk about things and be like back in my day you know <laughs> <laughs> in the old internet days before in in the pre-internet um but you know we had we had those we had cameras that you'd have to develop the film mm -hmm. and so it was just the best to like do something in a picture and then you know it's not weeks later that like someone's <laughs> gonna see it and then you're like ha -ha, i got him you know right. um, you boob <laughs> yes. it was like we were just i i just we were the most wholesome group of people. And I, I feel like we all uh, finally developed our comedy skills back then. Right. <laughs> Better <to do. laughs> I love that. We, we had a rule where it was like, my, my parents were very like, just, just don't come home with the cops. That's yeah. it. Like you can disappear. Just, just come home when the lights turn off or turn on. And then that's those, those are the rules. It's yeah. Like, hey, I love things. it. And I'm like, that was a crime for sure. Should not have done that. But hey, statute of limitations, baby. <laughs> you didn't come home with the cops. We'll see. Now, I I never had that rule um, because my dad was a cop. So I oh. always <laughs> was at home with the cops. Every like, day of everywhere. my life was home with the cops. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, you had the built-in meter to already be wholesome because you knew oh. what would happen if you weren't. For sure. It, <laughs> it's so, uh, I, man, I, yeah, my parents are the coolest people in the world, but they really were lucky with me too, because like, <laughs> you know, there's all like the stories of like cops, kids or preachers, kids like completely mm -hmm. rebel. And oh, yeah. I was so like, I'm such a rule follower. Are like, you? I, like, oh, <laughs> we're not supposed to do that. Of course we couldn't do that. Like, no, I was such a good kid. <laughs> I was so I, I wanted to, but I, I think my definitely my thing is like I was, you know, I always wanted to be like teacher's pet. I was always like I I wanted to be recognized for how good I was. Sure. <laughs> so maybe I had ulterior motives for, for my wholesomeness, <laughs> but I, yeah, no, I never, I did not get in trouble at all. That's so funny. My my mother-in-law says a similar thing about my wife because she's so strong-willed. She's like, thank God <laughs> you were a good kid because if you weren't, I couldn't stop you. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. Well, your wife and I sound very, very similar. Yeah. Because, yeah. <laughs> It's like you're we were gonna do what we were gonna do. Uh -huh. and lucky what we wanted to do was goodness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's best for the world. It's like, yeah. man, if that was the villain of the story, we're all in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you mentioned that you have uh that's kind of where you're building up your comedy skills. 
Because I may be very familiar with Sarah and Andrew. What? I may have listened to every song you guys put out. <laughs> oh, man, what year was that? Oh. Uh, it was a while back. <laughs> oh, forever ago. Oh, that's adorable. Okay, so, Aunt, oh, that takes me back. Oh, um, yeah, we're going in, Sarah. <laughs> we're going in. I love this. So, yeah, I, I don't... Uh, yeah, everyone. We didn't prep any of this. I don't know what I didn't know what was coming. I didn't know what we were talking about. All of this is just a show. Um, uh, no, I love, I love that. So, uh, Andrew is my best friend. Andrew, we grew up in Cookville together, and then, um, when we graduated, uh. Andrew came to Nashville. I went to LA. Eventually Andrew came to LA too. But at the time that we were doing um, Sarah and Andrew, a Andrew was uh, doing, he was a musician in Nashville. Um, I was doing comedy in LA. And um, do, do you know, uh, do you remember the postal service? Oh um, yes. Not like USPS. like Yeah, the band. The band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Such great right. heights. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah 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 so we were like well let's do a let's do a postal service kind of thing so we we did that whole project was like me in LA and Andrew in Nashville and then when we finished all of it um like I came to Nashville and did a couple of shows and Andrew came out to LA and did a few shows um and then uh Andrew eventually moved out to LA too um so that was and, and it was just fun because we had you know this was like we we became best friends when we were 12 um and so it was just so fun to do something as adults together that um you know you're you're hanging out doing stupid stuff with your best friend anyway so you might as well like you might as well record it and let it live on the <laughs> internet forever. Right. As a podcaster, I couldn't agree more. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fun. Whose idea was it? I I don't know. I don't I I mean both of ours. I I think like maybe we always I I can't actually remember. I need to ask Andrew if he does. Um but I think it just came about because yeah, I was like in I was at the Groundlings at the time. Um, cool. And so I was writing all these comedy show like characters and whatever. And um, Andrew was like, you know, touring as a musician. And we were like, well, let's put this stuff together so that we can, we can do something fun together. Um, and yeah, I think that's how it came about. And, and they, I don't, I don't know what our, Oh, I know. I know one of our first songs was uh, this because I was a nanny at the time and Andrew Andrew was touring and we were talking about how like um, there's a song like that we wrote one of our first ones called Shark Attack. Uh -huh. because we were like because um, like nannies or, or like babysitters when you um, when you babysit for anybody, like the first thing you do when, when the, the like parents leave is like, you go through their cabinet to see what <laughs> they have. Um, right. That's like, just, that's what you do. That's part right. of it. And, um, so I know we were talking about that one day and he was like, no way. He was like, musicians do the same thing. Cause they're all, you know, uh, when you're, when, when you're, starting out and you you don't have a ton of money then you know you're driving to all your shows and and you're usually like staying with people there and and they're starving because we're all like you know young and poor and mm -hmm. um so it made us laugh so hard that we were like musicians and babysitters do the same thing so we wrote a song about um uh how we eat the snacks of the people's houses we're staying at um <laughs> And it was beautiful because when we did, um, we, we did a show, uh, uh, one of the shows we did in LA, um, the, uh, the parents of, of the kid oh, I used no. to Andy came to the show and they loved it. They were like, <laughs> we love that one. And they were, they were so cool. They were like, of course we know that. They were like, we always like stalked the pantry because like we knew you and the boys would just like, you know go go crazy with the snacks when we were gone uh and they were like that's part of it you know like you're, <laughs> you provide the snacks so it was that was really fun that they were they were so supportive of knowing that i raided their pantry hardcore 
That's hilarious. They're like, we, we need to get the extra bag. Sarah's babysitting. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right? Family size, family size. We got it. They, they had to take class <laughs> trips before before I came over and, and babysat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've got some good ones. I I I have my favorites. Do you, oh, have, do you have any favorites to... What are your favorite songs to play? And then I'll tell you my favorites. Um. Okay. Uh, our favorite songs... Uh, Okay, so my one of our favorite. Well, we did. We we had a few covers that we played too, and we that uh-huh. uh, I loved. We we always played uh, an Amy Grant song, which oh. I just loved because in the middle <laughs> of like a comedy show, then we just start playing Amy Grant, and everyone's so confused. Uh, <laughs> but that uh, we played "Good for Me," um, Amy Grant. Um, I think uh, I did love. Um, I I love Shark Attack. Um, it's a great one. Uh oh, I I think um another one we we wrote and I don't know this is kind of stuff where I'm like oh man I I need to go back and listen to these songs because <laughs> you know like how, how stuff changes in like the 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 world and like what's appropriate to say but, oh uh, sure <laughs> no, so whatever but but there is one that I did I did love playing um and it was like we we uh i i have said on many occasions like i wish it, like andrew and i both have been like man we'd be we wish we were gay like we would yeah. just be so <laughs> good at it we'd be so good and like i think women are the coolest people in the world and i'm like man right. I, you know i was born this way i'm like <laughs> bummed i was born straight you know um so we wrote a song about how we would be really good gays. Um, yeah, it's a good and, one. Yeah, and so that was like one of my favorite ones to play um, because it was like uh, uh, it, it it was a it was a love song to like our our good friends when I first moved to LA. Um, the like the raddest group of Los Angeles lesbians just kind of like took me under their wing and like that cool. they were like my best friends and took such good care of me and I was just like man. I like I loved them so much and I was like, well, this proves it. If I <laughs> if I had any shred of me that wasn't straight, like I am around the coolest women, like the the most baller females in the world. Yeah. And I was like so bummed because I was like <laughs> It really it really solidifies the fact that I am straight. Yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> right. Like that just seems so fun. <laughs> I know. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I, I always wonder that with musicians because you play songs over and over and over. And, you know, you hear stories about like, I hate this song now because I played it so many times. But your music is so funny. It's like it's <laughs> it's real flight of the concords. Oh, you know? thank you. We love Flight of the Concords. Thank it's, you. It's so yeah. funny and so specific that, like, if you know, it's going to be extra funny. But even if you don't, it's it's still absurd to where it's hilarious. Oh, <laughs> thank you. We we appreciate that. That's that was that was our intention for yeah, sure. Well, you did it correctly. Well done. <laughs> I, I really like Farmers Market. Oh, we hot dads and hot moms. Yeah, mom. it's oh, so that funny too. that like going oh, to yeah. a farmer's market to look at hot dads and hot moms. I was like, that is hilarious. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Craigslist crapper, you can't beat. Oh, oh, that was enough. Oh, that's probably one of my favorite ones. Yeah. To be live. <laughs> it was, there was this like Craigslist post that we found about um, where somebody like gambled on a fart. Yeah. Um, <laughs> As we all and have. <laughs> and it made us laugh so hard. Um, and, oh, this is a great story. I, I, I am just now like this is how much I wasn't prepared for all this. Right. I'm, just, I'm like remembering this stuff. So yeah. that Andrew and I had a show booked, and um, we that was not one of our songs at all. Oh. Like we didn't have it. So we were, um, we were hanging out that day, um, before our show and, and saw the, um, somebody, one of our friends like sent us the, the, the Craigslist post and we were like <laughs> cry laughing when we read it. And so then we were like, how can we make this a part of our show? Um, like, how do we do this? It's not a song. And, uh, so Andrew had just written this, 
he had written this other like chorus for for something for like a song we hadn't written like he'd written the music for it mm -hmm. and he was like um well what if we try to like right now <laughs> like <laughs> make it like let's let's sing the chorus of this or like a couple lines of it and then just he was like i'll just like play music and you just read it and so anyway so we do that and and it this is like a couple hours before our show um and and we play it and and i swear every time we did that song live like i could not get through it i was laughing so hard <laughs> stupid craigslist post but um yeah that's how that one that's how that one came to be that it was like a couple hours before a show and we were like we got to do something with this because if we're laughing this hard we got to share it with the world yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i have my message <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing i love that the music was already there we're like i guess we could plug this in <laughs> yeah yeah he was it was like something else he was working on and he was like let me play this and i was like okay uh play that and and then i was like let me just try to sing along with it to a couple of these lines and then we were like <laughs> okay let's do it let's do it and if it's terrible who cares it's three minutes out of someone's life who cares you know yeah exactly um, i so love it just, that so was good fun. <laughs> like that i like bullying won't amount to anything Oh it's a yeah. Good anthem. It's a good anthem. I like that one. Thank you. I, I can't remember why we wrote that. We were probably pissed we heard some yeah. bullies. <laughs> right. um, but yeah. Um oh I love that one too. Solid. Solid. Your Christmas single, also solid. Very accurate. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you get for Christmas? Fat. That's what they got. <laughs> that was okay. So we Andrew and I came back to to Cookville one year for Christmas. Um and there was a, um, there's like a restaurant and bar in, in town and, and it's a really, really small town. Mm -hmm. Um, and we were like, we were like, oh, let's, let's try to play there. So like they, they let us, um, and, uh, we played that song and no one thought it was funny. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> we played it at Christmas time in our hometown oh, and no. no one thought it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> and then but then we played it in LA and like it killed sure. um, but I'm sure they were like you jerks wrote this about us right <laughs> like, <laughs> oh. like, no it's a funny song it's a funny song because not around here it ain't like, oh, oh, no. <laughs> no. It but you know I think you have to have those those things too like you yes. know how we're about how like your um you know you 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 grow up with like n not money and like you just mm -hmm. learn how to get by. I think the same way. Like if you if every time you did a show it killed. Like I I I I don't know. I, that doesn't build character. Like right, bomb, bombing with somebody yeah. is okay. All right. Well, uh, that's that's it. We we did that. We did it together. <laughs> pivot, <laughs> pivot. <laughs> and yeah, I know we were like. Let's switch to to a really happy, upbeat song that has nothing to do with our hometown. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> There's this Craigslist stat I saw recently. You're like, oh, okay, got it, got it. Got it. Yeah, let's <laughs> let's bring him back. Everybody loves a fart joke. Right. <laughs> and if you don't, you're no friend of mine. I'll tell you that much. Oh. I absolutely not. I can't get down with people who don't think farts are funny. There's that there's an old thing. It's like people that what is it? People that don't find farts funny are extra sad because they live in the world with the same amount of farts but less laughter. Yes. I was like, yeah, that's the meditation I want to take. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, that's, that's your, that's the, um, that's the calming. Uh, yeah, exactly. I just need Matthew McConaughey to say it back to me. Yes. You know, <laughs> all right, here comes a fart. <laughs> oh, how, how was it shooting a music video for the real Netflix and chill song? Cause it's hilarious, but oh, it's a music yeah. video now. Dude, that's our that that's that's probably my favorite song to play. Yeah, um, it's yeah, real fun. That one was so fun. Um, that was the best. We um, we rented a studio. Um, cool. we we had rented it for um. There was a there was a show that um I was doing at the time in L.A. Um, I think it was called Stupid Songs. Solid title. It was great. It was all these like re really great um 
really, really fantastic comedians that like we had all met at the um, groundlings, but everybody like came from singing backgrounds. And so it was all, all, you know, it was like a compilation of all these stupid songs that everybody had written. It was so funny and like such a talented group of people, but um, we, uh, Andrew and I wrote it for that show and the, the song was so fun and catchy and, and, you know, um, poppy that we, um, yeah, we rented a studio. We got a, um, we had a choreographer, like, do nice choreography. We, uh, you know, the whole shebang. We, yeah, I think a neighbor at the time was like, uh, like a filmmaker and he was like, I love you guys' stuff. Do you want to shoot something? Like, it was just this really cool collaborative thing, um, cool. with the, this crew and, um, yeah, I was like that that shoot, I was like, see, this is this is why people get into like um entertainment because mm -hmm. you're you're like if every if every project I ever do can be me like having fun with my best friend, like that yeah. like what else? <laughs> what else is there, man? Yeah. That's the dream. It also too like made us um we cuz it was I mean it was just it, it was us. And so, um, uh, our, our buddies who were shooting it were just fantastic. And, uh, but Andrew and I were the ones kind of wrangling everybody like the hair and makeup and the choreographer and all the, the sure. friends we had that were in the shoot with us and all that. And we were just like, it just solidified that, that you don't, um, you know, all the horror stories that you hear about, like these sets being so mean or like, mm -hmm. uh, really toxic we were like they don't have to be like we, <laughs> we uh managed to have a really good time and be kind to everybody and like we paid everybody like out of our own pocket because we were just like we just wanted to do it yeah and so it was just yeah it just solidified that you're like you don't have to you don't have to be awful right you know <laughs> like yeah you're allowed to run things in a really positive, supportive way. Dude, I remember having that epiphany and it made me so angry. I was like, wait a second, being an asshole is a choice every time? <gasps> what? That yeah. makes it so much worse. <laughs> I know. I know. And and it was, you know, there was like, it, there's always the, I feel like, you know, making excuses for it of like, well, it's the, it's the stress and it's this. Uh -huh. and, and it's like, no, it's still a choice to <laughs> right? like yeah. You really don't have to, you know, we had right. never done this before and we didn't know anything. And uh, yeah, it was stressful, but, um, you know, everybody had so much fun. That's so cool. That comes through in the video. It looks like a blast. Oh, good. Yeah. And then, um, oh, yeah, our 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 guys that um, that, that edited it were just amazing. Yeah. Amazing. It just looked really, really great. It did. I enjoyed it. Well, thank you. I'm so glad you found it. That's so fun. <laughs> I did. So so you're doing music. You meet Andrew in middle school. When did the interest in acting start? Oh, always. Um yeah. I yeah, I always I mean, I did children's theater and stuff like yeah. in my hometown. So I was I was always interested in um in theater. Um, but I was that I would say like as a kid, it mm -hmm. was secondary, like I, I loved basketball and that was like my, like my thing. That was yeah. like the priority. Um, but then, you know, in the, in, in the off season when I wasn't playing basketball, then I was always in the play that, that the, you know, children's theater was doing, um, until, uh, my senior year of high school, um, which was so crazy. And I don't know. Uh, <laughs> this is, this is another one of those that, that definitely goes to where you were saying about your wife, uh, uh -huh. <laughs> and, and, and myself being like so strong willed, um, my senior year of high school, which is like arguably when people, you know, if you played basketball your whole life, like that's like, that's the year, you know, yeah. um, I, uh, had played from the time I was like seven years old up until, um, you know, 17, Wow. And senior year, I just was like, ah, 
I'm not going to play this year. <laughs> like, <I> did, <laughs> at the beginning of the, the beginning of the school year. Um, oh, so no. the day, the day that like basketball tryouts, and if you'd been on the team forever, it was like, you still had to go to tryouts, but you were like, you know, definitely gonna be on the team. Sure. Um, uh, so the day basketball tryouts, my senior year was the same day as, um, like tryouts for the, like the school play. Ah, um, decisions. And I, I, yeah, I wasn't like what like high school musical back then. I didn't do both. Um, sure. I, <laughs> I didn't show up to basketball tryouts and, um, and I like the coach was like, where, like, where is Cravens where, you know, whatever, um, sure. I'm around you know down the hall in the theater um and it was like oh no this wasn't a mistake i didn't mess the days up like i don't i'm not <laughs> gonna play this year like i'm not i because I, you know uh, again it was like i'm not i'm not getting any taller <laughs> sure <laughs> like i'm not gonna play basketball in college and i'm not and and to be quite honest i probably wasn't gonna play uh, uh my senior year because there were uh, there were freshmen that were taller than me and like really good you know sure. it's like I, I think like in real time it, it was like realizing that like oh this thing that you love like your body's not shaped for it <laughs> <laughs> vertically I, challenged <laughs> yeah and I and and it was just like you know, and, and, but it was very, it, I, I didn't, I didn't quit basketball in like a huff or anything. It was, it was a like a conscious decision of like, you know, these other people are so good at this thing and I love this game so much, but I just know it's not my thing. Like it's not, it's not going to be. And so I really like this other thing. So let me go. And I, um, yeah. And so I, I, uh, uh, audition for the play and I got the stepmother and Cinderella and it was like one nice. of the most fun that I had ever had on stage. I bet. Yeah. And so it was, so it was the right, it's definitely the right move, but it was a weird, it was a really weird transition, I think, for everyone in my life because they were like, wait, you quit your senior year? What? <laughs> Right before the last lap, the basketball girl isn't playing basketball. <laughs> yeah. Um, You're like, no. But no, I, d I didn't. And, and uh, I mean, I, uh, then I, I still went to all the games and I cheered them on. Like, I loved, I loved the game. I just, like, you know, I wasn't, I just knew I, I would have more fun being in a play than, like, sitting on the bench, you know. If I was going to sure. sit on the bench, I might as well go do something else and then just come and watch the games and not go to practice, you know. <laughs> yeah, way less pressure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think that's probably when it switched that I, like, gotcha. to um, acting um, outside of I, – I still always loved sports. I still always consumed sports, but I sure. just – that was kind of where my player career ended. Right. <laughs> you looked at the length of your arms and legs and was like, all right, let's pivot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, think I, can, uh, I, I can stand on a stage and people can see me, but uh, right. <laughs> I don't know how much I can shoot over these other uh, awesome female basketball players. Right. <laughs> I mean, I think in hindsight, you made the right choice. You're doing all right. I think so. And that full circle moment, now you're emceeing over the people who went on to play. Oh, my God. What is this, Sarah? What's happening? I, come on. Look what? how you brought it back around. I know. And so so it's so dreamy because it's like, yeah, it's that. It's it's you don't have to stop loving the things that you love just sure. because you're not. You know, you, you can pivot and, and arguably now, like, yeah, I was never, even if I tried to force it, like, I was never going to have a like a playing basketball career, but I pivoted to something that I love so much. And like voiceover has been such a wonderful career to me. And now I get to come back around to where it all started. And like, I still love this game so much, but, but now I actually get to do some where I get to walk in and be like, you know what? I am like, I'm excellent at this. Like I yeah. am, I am an expert in my field in this. There and now are. I get to into a space that is like I love this game and I get to be a part of the game in a way that I'm at my best you know yeah yeah man stuff like that you're like all right universe I see what you're doing there's yeah. there's, there's something extra working here it's uh, for sure for I sure I love that 
so yeah i'm i'm i i love yeah i think um this is this is what you get from wholesome kids i always like try to turn like be like okay yeah. what's something in this but you know i think <laughs> this is why it's so uh, like awful that we put so much pressure on like high school kids to know what they're gonna do for the rest of their life because, oh yeah <laughs> you know like oh how yeah how do you possibly know like everything that I was doing in high school is, is not even close to what I do now. And if I had of, you know, it, it, if I'd have made myself stick to this thing of like, you know, who I was in high school, I wouldn't have been able to grow into the like really awesome human that I love now that I am, you know, yeah. I made myself be, continue just to be who I was in high school, you know? Totally. That's the, that's the objective. I, th I think is like every five years you should be a different person for the better, yes. you know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what a, yeah, that is the goal. You know, it's like, if you're the same person 20 years outside of high school, you're like, Oh, you haven't changed at all. I'm like, Oh no. <laughs> yeah, right? you? You're supposed like, to, the point is oh, you're supposed no. to. <laughs> uh, I messed up somewhere. <laughs> right. You had 20 years of life and nothing changed. <laughs> right. Yeah. Then you're really doing something wrong. Um, oh my God. How long out of high school did you move to LA? Um, so I went to college at uh, four years after I, I went to UT, um, nice. University of Tennessee, and I graduated from there. Um, and I moved to LA as soon as I graduated college. So, um, uh, and, and I think that, um, I don't know, again, like say, saying like people have to know what they're going to do in college. Like, at the University of Tennessee, like I didn't know voiceover was a job. Like sure. I didn't, you know, I didn't go to school for that. But I, I think that you know what I, what I learned there. Nothing that I learned there like applies to like my job. <laughs> except, sure. Except, except for I went to like a really big state school that, um, you know, I, I, I learned how to be around a bunch of different kinds of people and a bunch of different groups and, yeah. and learned, learned how to talk to and socialize and, and get along with a whole bunch of different people that I think like I may not, I, I probably wouldn't have gotten that experience at like a, um, like a, a, you know, a fancy drama school or something because sure everyone is like very similar um, or, or more so because you're all going there for the same reason. Right. Right. Way more focused as well. Like we're here yeah. to train and do this as opposed to like college <laughs> fun. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like, and, and I think, um, you know, looking back on it now, I, I was really bummed uh, again. Like we didn't have, I, I, I don't come for money. Like we didn't have money to mm -hmm. um, send me to, to a fancy drama school, which is Relatable. absolutely what <laughs> okay. right? I tip my hat. Hello, right. um, but we, so we didn't have the money to do that. And, and, you know, at the time I was really bummed because, you know, I can't change that. Like that's, that's no kid's fault. Like you can't, um, and I, I, you know, had, uh, being in state and scholarships, like I, I could go to state school, you know? Um, yeah. and so it really wasn't my choice to go there, but now I'm like, man, it's another one of those things where like everything did work out the way it was supposed to, because I, I loved, I loved college and I loved, um, I loved my experience there and I love that it wasn't focused on acting. It, yeah. it wasn't. It was being, it was being a kid and going to football games and like doing stupid stuff with your friends. <laughs> you know? and, and, and then, and so then when it was like, I moved to LA and like, I was a, a professional actor. I just felt like I, my being able to tap into the reality of, of, the existence of of a real person mm -hmm. experiencing these like I had all those experiences right I wasn't like in class like from a script like learning oh this is what it would be like at a college party like I did I had all those yeah you know so yeah I think that's like what um even though it wasn't my like I I would have preferred to go to a fancy acting school but um you know, going to state school ended up being one of the best experiences of my life. And I think why I do have an acting career now. Crazy. 
Yeah. You, you've got all that life underneath you. Oh, yeah. You know, that's the thing that like you really need. Like I saw a thing recently where Killian Murphy was talking about Christopher Nolan says it takes 30 years to make an actor. And the reason being is you have to have a life that you've lived that you can then draw on in your work. And it adds yeah. an, a whole four levels of depth to it because you've experienced it right. as opposed to it just being in your head. Like, I think this is how you would shotgun a beer. You're like, no, no, no. Excuse me. <laughs> Give me that key. <laughs> right. No, I, I believe it. I think that like there's a um, there's a confidence in in making choices when you've been there. Of yeah. like, I'm not trying to play at this thing because this is how it really is. This is how, you know, so there's this, this really beautiful, like natural connection versus like trying to do this thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That being said, how was it working <laughs> on the young and the restless? Because soaps fascinate me because they're the Olympics of acting. Oh man. You know what? I loved it so much. Yeah? It was I'm so, well, I, I'm so, I'm so like type A, I'm so rule follower. I actually love the pace. Um, and I, I love how, um, just on, they are just so on schedule. Yeah. Um, I, I loved it. Um, I, I, it was a voiceover role that I had. I, I, I played this nurse, but it was like, she was always like on the phone with people, sure. <laughs> uh, but but I got to go, I, I got to go to set and like, I did it there because mm -hmm. it, it was like it, because that's the pacing, right? It's not, they're not going to let me record and plug it in later. They're like, no, we're, we, we plug and play as we go, you know, Yeah, we're doing um, this. Yeah. And so it was like, it was just so, uh, Oh, I thought it was awesome. And I have so much respect for like soap actors because like, same you have to show up and you, you just have to nail it every time. Like you just, w there's not this whole, um, which, which I also understand. And I love the process of like creating something like that's super fun too. Uh -huh. like the, the team and the director, you know, creating this character. That's, that's really awesome. There's just not time for that in soaps. So you show up with your thing and like, you don't mess up the lines. You don't mess up anything because you're doing one, maybe two takes and they're moving on, you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. It. Oh yeah, it is. And so, um, oh, I loved it. I was like, oh, I could definitely, um, uh, I, I wanted her to be on there. Like, you know, yeah. For <laughs> tons of episodes because I was like I love this I you know show up she gets you know I, I do one maybe two takes of of every line every scene that I'm in and then you're out and so I'm like man I show up at like 9 a.m I you know I don't have to get in hair and makeup so I'm like I stroll in there and 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 there for like maybe an hour and then I piece for the rest of the day it's awesome dude um, yeah I love soaps I bet. And it's I imagine that there's a similar thing in the brain with sports to soaps because there is that competitive sort of drive you have to have to be like, it's game time right now. Let's do this quickly. Whew. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah. Scratches that same itch. It's uh yeah, it's impressive. It's really impressive. It's you know, the other thing too that that um I think like theater kids um where you're growing up and doing plays that like um that adrenaline and that high you get from the live like this this is it you don't you know yeah uh, that where it doesn't really um I, I don't I don't get that same type of high, like oh I I love voiceover I think it's the best um but it's it's not you know if you mess up you you re-record you do another take right. it's not a deal you know sure. um so I think that was another reason that I loved soaps is, is that it was, you, you get, I got that same high from like, okay, it's gay. I can't mess this up. This is like, you know, it, yeah. if you do, it's moving on and, and you've, you've messed up and every that that's what it is. Um, but yeah, it's that, it's that live theater, um, uh, adrenaline that I was, you know, didn't realize that I had missed. Dude, did you see anyone do like a uh, curse to ruin a take? No. That's no. like. Do you know about that? Uh uh. That's that's like an old like soap trick where because they move so quickly that if they messed up a line or they weren't happy with the read, they'd just be like, "I don't want to go over here, shit," because they can't use that take, and they would get another <laughs> take. <laughs> uh, that's so funny. No, right? I I 
all I saw was perfection. Like they, I, I never saw anyone mess up anything. It was, what? it was really, it was amazing. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I genuinely, like I said, I left that being so impressed with soap actors. That's so cool. Yeah. yeah. How long before you started working in games? Because you've done a few. Uh, year. years. It was, it, it took me a while. I, I worked in commercials. Um, oh, okay. Different for, style of acting. Um, I, I love them. I, they still might be like one of my favorite. Uh, it's not, it's not really like on camera oh. commercials. I love, oh yeah, I did that. That was like, I started out doing on camera commercials and then, sure. then I, then voiceover commercials got busy. Um, and then, yeah, it was, I was doing voiceover for years before I booked my first game. Um, it was like, uh, yeah, I, I was auditioning for games for a long time before I ever booked my first one. Sure. Uh, to the point to the point that I was just like, I'm never gonna book a game. And I got <laughs> I, I have such a deep voice that people are like, Oh, you'd be so great in games. And I would just get so mad. I'd be like, Stop <laughs> telling me that. Like I never book them. I read for them all the time and I never book and I'm never gonna book one. So just stop. Like like you know when things cease to be a compliment because it just like digs so yep. deep. No, like, I'm trying. <laughs> I would love to. They just don't want me right now. You know? <laughs> Tell your friends. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what was your first game? Do you remember? Halo. Holy oh, yeah. shit. That was your yeah. first one? Remember, absolutely. Era. That was my very first game. That's why it yeah. took so long. You had to build up that universal credit, you know, oh. like, all right, lots of no's, lots of no's, but this yes is going to be worth all the no's. It was awesome. And then it was, um, I, uh, this, is, this is something, this is like how fast like the video game world works because it was like years and years and years of auditioning and I had never um, booked anything. And then I booked Halo Um and I went into that recording session, um, and when I got out of that recording session, I was on three other games. Like, no no joke. It was a game. Hey, look, Warner Brothers was doing the game, and they, after that session, they put me on the other games that they were working on. It was awesome. Dude. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What, a, what a slingshot. It, oh, yeah, it's awesome, and it was like, you know, and, and the whole time, I, I don't even, you know, I, I don't know how I'm doing. I've never, I've never done a game session before. So I'm just sitting there like trying not to like lose it, you right. know, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but I, um, I, I got out of the session and the director, um, who is now a, a very good friend of mine. Um, and I've worked with her on, on so many games since then, but, but she came out of the session and she was like, great job. Um, she was like, I just want to let you know, um, you'll never not work again. And I was like, oh, hell yeah. What? Uh, and you know, in my head, I'm like, wait, hold on. The not, you know, I'm just seeing like, <laughs> what, did I hear this right? What do you mean? Double negative. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, uh, and so I was like, oh, okay. Uh, thank you. Um, can can I ask you what? Because I was like, listen, I'll be honest. This is my first session ever. Like, I don't like first video game session ever. I I don't I don't really know what I did. And and I was like, <laughs> can you can you let me know? And and she uh she said she said you you showed up on time and you were great to work with. And I, nice. and I like my mouth dropped open and I said, that's the bar. That's the bar. What? You, you just have to be punctual and be great to work with. And she was like, you'd be surprised. You would be. Oh, no. um, and I, and, and then she was like, and you have a deep voice. And so you sound, you know, you can sound commanding without your voice getting too high pitched. So she's like, you're great for games in, the, in that way. But really the main thing is like, we want to work with people who are good people. Yeah. And yeah. And so, so then uh, I, I, on, on numerous projects since then I've worked with her uh, and uh, Warner brothers also on numerous projects since then. So it's like a, um, but I, I, I love that about video games is it, it is a very like, um, it, it's a, it's a tight community. So when oh, you, yeah. you know, you, you're, when, when you do get in and then you're like, you know, there's that director 
and and the studio. So then you're like, okay, so that studio knows you for all of the rest of their projects. That director knows you for all the rest of their projects. If there's a, you know, person that was working at the studio that then, you know, eventually becomes a director, well, then they know you for all of their projects. So it really just like snowballs out of just like, getting to know people. And I think if you, um, you know, have a reputation of, of being someone who is pleasant to work with right, then, and, and doing your job well, you know, but I, totally. I think that, like it's, um, there th- people can train and, and, and become mm-hmm. great actors. And so I think like, but really, it seems like doing your job well seems less important than the the other of like just being a good human and being someone who is not a jerk to work yeah. with. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's nuts. Halo's the first one. I like that a lot, actually. Big picture. The fact that you auditioned for years and then you get Halo. Because if I remember correctly, it was like Halo, Arkham Knight, and Star Wars Uprising all came out in the same year. Yeah. And so all of those, I, I was, I didn't do all the sessions in the same week, but, Uh um, but, uh, Star Wars, um, and Batman, and then like, uh, um, there was a a Lego game that didn't come out till, till later, but all of those, uh, all of those bookings came from the Halo session. Um, they, they all were just from like, I, the team met me and then, um, yeah. It, I mean, crazy. Wow. And, and then that that same director from Halo is like who um, I did Injustice with when I was Power Girl. Yeah. And, and then when I was recording Power Girl, they were writing Mortal Kombat and they were writing they were writing Frost. And then they told me after, you know, and it's years between these games. Right. Yeah. And when I end up booking Mortal Kombat. Then they told me, they were like, well, we were writing this while you were recording Power Girl. And so we kind of had you in our heads while we were, while yeah. we were writing Frost. And it's like, it, it's that's the kind of stuff where I just am like to, to like actors that it, it's, that's the hardest part because you really don't know what's happening in, like behind the scenes everywhere. Like there's yeah. no. I had no idea that that while I was working on this one thing, there was going to be another like huge project with a huge character that they were already thinking of me because they don't tell you that stuff. Right. And right. so there, you know, that's the kind of thing when, when you're just like, you feel like you're banging your head against the wall and you're like, I don't know what else to do to like get this going. I don't know what else I can do. It, it's like, everything that you are doing does matter. You just don't, you don't know it yet. Like you don't, you, you don't have all of the stuff and there is something that it's like, wow, that like a recording session from five years ago is the reason that you've got this project, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think that's like one of the hardest things about being an actor is that you have to, you, you have to work really hard to, um, mentally <laughs> mentally oh like, yeah <laughs> yeah you know you 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 have to keep a healthy um uh mental space um by yourself there there's not other people there's not other it, you know it's great when when you're working on stuff but when you're not it you you really just it doesn't benefit you to like beat yourself up because you know i i i i could probably look back at those years now like between uh, in injustice and 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 Mortal Kombat, when I didn't know this this big character was being thought of for me, where yeah. I'm sure I had like weeks and months and times that I was just like, I don't know, maybe I should just give it, you know, like <laughs> I, I don't know, I, I you know, I'm I'm doing everything I can and I'm not, you know, I'm just not breaking through. Like, uh, uh, you just you just don't you just don't ever know like uh, where your, your work is, is being noticed, you know? Right. And that's why it's so important to be doing the work on your own. And like, you know, luck really is preparation meets opportunity. Yeah. So if you're not preparing, the opportunity shows up. If you get that audition, but you're not ready for it, you're not going to get the job. And then if you get the job and you don't do a good job, that it work begets work. Exactly. You know, but you have to show up and you have to train and do the things. I love that. Do your, do your own stuff. Like you don't have to, 
you don't have to wait for somebody to pay you to be creative. Yeah. You know? Like, like this whole, I, I, I love, I had no idea if I, I really could have like thought, um, uh, of a, you know, a hundred things you'd have brought up. I never would have thought Sarah <laughs> would have been part of it. And I love it because, uh, I, this is yeah, what I do, it's, Sarah. <laughs> it's a good, well, it's fantastic, but it's like, that makes me so happy because that was just a fun thing that my best friend and I did. And I like, that's the kind of stuff that that matters like that's the kind of stuff Agreed. We, no one was paying us to do that but it was like we were we were being creative we were like flexing a muscle we were practicing we were we were writing we were you know it it just we were keeping ourselves busy in a creative space when yeah. And that, and that's what, in, that's what it is to be an actor and a creative of any sense of like, you don't sit around and wait for somebody to pay you. You're yeah, a creative. Yeah. So you go be creative. And then when they pay you, it's awesome. Totally <laughs> agreed. And those are my favorite kind of people are the ones that also make their own stuff. Cause I'm like, okay, you have that fire in you. Cause so many yeah. actors can fall into that trap of like, oh, well, if I get an agent, then I can take it easy. Or, you know, I'll wait for the auditions to come in. It's like, listen, good things come to those who wait, but only what's left over from those who hustle. That's the yeah. rule of the world, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like that. No, it is. It it really is. And you're, you're, all of that stuff ends up, I think, mattering more. And then you're going to get, then you're going to get an agent that really understands you more because they, they have more of your voice and they they get you and then and then they know how to pitch you because you're you know you're not just saying like oh I'm eager and I want to do this they they have all this stuff that you've created that they're like okay this is her vibe and this is what she's like, <laughs> this is why she's right for this you know yeah yeah when you're when you're working in games because I know you also worked on one of my top two favorite animes of all time One Punch Man oh yeah incredible how was uh, dubbing Oh, it's so, uh, I love it. Um, it's another one of those things where like, I think industry wise, it's a, um, you're paid so much less. Like the dubbing rate is really awful. Super low. Yeah. Uh, it's super low. Um, I don't think that's indicative of the work at all. Um, I actually think dubbing is harder than, uh, original animation. I thought because, so too. Yeah. Yeah. Because not only so original animation, yeah, you're creating a character and you're you're having attitudes and emotions and and feeling and connection. Well, dubbing, you're having to do all of that stuff, but you're also having to fit it in two point three seconds, Ooh. and and there's no there's no getting around it. You're it's not that like you okay, you can just go a little bit longer, right? Like so, we have a lot more. Um, I think like freedom and delivery in in original animation sure because you pacing wise you just can't like it, it's got to fit within the the time right that given. mouth is and, moving <laughs> yeah um no i love dubbing i think it's real fun I, I think for people that are um like musicians or musically inclined like dubbing's really great because because we hear everything in music we hear everything in time you know yeah so um, oh yeah, it was great. It was great. I, I, I love it. I, I, I did, oh, I, I did a, uh, that, that one came because of this other anime erased that I did that is just oh, yeah. a mystery. Um, I love that, but yeah, it's, it's all of those. It, it's really like, you yeah, you meet people working on a project and then they know you and then that this other thing comes along and they're like, oh, I think she'd be great for this, right? You know? Mm-hmm. Nature of the game. Yeah. You talked about like your knowing your vibe. Yes. And uh, listen, I think Big City Greens is one of the best cartoons in the last decade. Oh, good. And I feel like it fits your vibe, Sarah. <laughs> <gasps> Thank you. I do too. <laughs> I, it's totally my vibe when that... Um, uh, when when that uh audition came through i i don't know where we had been but i was i was somehow we were coming back from the airport and i was with kari walgren who is like legend goddess, um in voiceover but we were together and i had gotten this um audition and i was like kari had parked at my house or something so we were coming back to to my house from the airport and i was like hey sit in here with me let me just let me just record this i want someone else's ear on it because i you know she was like this like southern trashy biker chick and i was like i i 
I feel like I should do this character. <laughs> I know this so, woman personally. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I, I feel, I feel like this character is is me, and and so I just want some other ears on it because I want to make sure I'm sending in something, you know, that I I'm not missing anything, whatever. Um, so so yeah, Kari's with me when I like record that, and I remember her, um, uh, like. I don't know, it was five or six lines or something. And she was like, okay, well, yeah, that's you. Great. <laughs> uh, and then she had, I don't even remember what the line was, but she had a really great idea for one of them. She was like, oh, you know, this line in the middle, what if, what if this was happening when you said that? And it made us laugh so hard. And then I recorded it again with like, and I don't even remember what the note was, but I remember she said something of like, you know, cause you get it, you get these disjointed like mm -hmm. lines random that, that don't, yeah that that yeah. don't have any context or anything and i just remember when she was like what if this was happening when you said that and i was like yes so i recorded <laughs> that and then i was like okay well what would i like is there anything else what do i do and she was like no that like that's it just send it right now um and so that was really fun that this like uh we we just happened to be together and and i you know uh got some really fun collaborative feedback but from from you know a, a phenomenal woman oh my God. Um, one of the best who ever do it oh absolutely and and so i think that like yeah like this um i i have found the people that are the most successful um really really like are are so open to to feedback because it's it's not about because we don't see feedback as being like, you're saying my idea is bad. It's like, right. how great can this be? Like, yeah. here's my idea. And if you have another, you know, I, I, Jen Hale is another one that oh, is just, I she, adore her. She's, she is a legend and yeah. she's, she is, uh, you know, the, the best at what she does. Mm -hmm. and, and like, she will it blows my mind she'll call me and she'll be like hey i'm just not feeling this thing today like get <laughs> get on here and direct me and i'm like what, right. <laughs> what? <laughs> but she's it, she is so she's like jaw droppingly amazing at what she does yeah but she, but she's so also like so open to feedback that I'll be like, I don't know, this this might be funny. And she's like, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> and she does it again. And it's just like, you know, I, I she doesn't she doesn't need anyone's help. She's the best. Like yeah. Kari doesn't need anyone's help. And in that story, it was like Kari was helping me, but it's like nobody, you know, it, it's you know what you're doing, but it's just fun to collaborate with people and you make it better. So I think that's like you know, uh, uh, like, don't ever be too cool to like <laughs> take notes and be like, oh, okay, let me try that, you know? Sure. Well, I mean, you bring up being too cool and you bring up Kari Walgren. I got to talk about Slaughter. Oh, man. Come on now. How did that happen? Oh. Speaking of cool, yeah. my God. The coolest man. Uh, that, that happened because Kari is a mega fan of Slaughter. Um, <laughs> Perfect. She, yeah, she's a mega fan. And she was like, one day she was like, I really like want to do a show where I sing slaughter songs. Like, uh, and I think it'd be really cool if it was like an all, all female version of slaughter. And yeah. I was like, well, uh, <laughs> I want to do uh, Lionel Richie. So you're going to have to tell me what that is because right. I don't know what water <laughs> is. Right. Um, and then, so she played it for me and I was like, oh, yikes, not my music. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but I was like, but so not my, not my style of music, but I was like, I love you. And yeah, whatever you need. Um, there you go. Ride or die. And, yeah. And so then, so what was crazy about Slaughter is that, or Slaughter. Slaughter, uh, yes. Um, was we, it, it really was this thing that Kara just wanted to sing Slaughter songs and she wanted to do like an all female band. And so, so we got a band together. Um, I, I had a friend who, uh, played guitar, um, and, uh, he uh, she 
he has since transitioned. So at the time she had mm-hmm. reached out to a bunch of other, um, but, but now uh, he was the band leader and got all the other musicians. And nice. then um, Kari called me and Mary Elizabeth McGlynn and was like, I want to do this thing. Will y'all be my backup singers? And we were like, yeah, girl. <laughs> 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 you do well. um, and so we, yeah, we would like, uh, Kari would rent a little like rehearsal space in North Hollywood. And we, we would go over there and we would, we would sing and practice with the band. And then, um, we just, it, it legit was just supposed to be, it was just a fun thing Kari wanted to do. So we didn't, we didn't even tell people about it. We, we texted like a, a handful of our friends and we're just like, Hey, come to the federal, which just now it is great restaurant performance space in LA. And, and just uh, within the last couple months, it's like closing. Um, so mm. that's really fun. But we, anyway, we, we told like, we're come, come over. Like this is a silly thing. We're going to, um, uh, we're, we're going to sing these slaughter songs. It's going to be great. We've been, you know, whatever, but we didn't, you know, um, we didn't post anything about it. We didn't, we, we, we didn't promote it at all. Um, we just texted a few of our friends. Um, well, uh, the weirdest thing that none of us could have ever expected is that like, you know, you tell a couple for it, it really was one of those things where you're like, no way. Like, uh, the couple friends we told like were you know like told a couple people oh i'm going to this thing like sure and mary are singing like oh okay we'll come to whatever we show up to the thing and and there's a line around the outside (laughs) like standing (laughs) up only it was fully packed and i i'm i promise you like it was like not we purposely did not promote it because it just was like this fun thing that Kari wanted to do but like the word of mouth spread that it was happening that it was like it was fully packed and so after we did that show which was all uh, supposed to only be the show one show that we ever did <laughs> the federal came up and they were like you guys have to do this again when will you, when will you come back and do this again and we were like well that wasn't really what we were planning on doing but <laughs> maybe I don't know so then we do it again. We we're like, okay, yeah, sure, why not? Like this this was fun, and because then all the people that were there were like, I have all these people that I, I would have, they would love this and whatever. So so then the next show that we did, that there was a guy out in in the um the the audience that was like trying to get to to the back to talk to us, and and people were like, didn't know who he was, and he was like, um. I just, I need to go back there because I've got a, like a, a video for you guys. Well, this was Slaughter's manager and he oh. had videoed, he was like FaceTiming them during what? the show. He's like, you've got to see this. These, these chicks are doing your music and it's awesome. And so then in like, we had a little break or something and he comes to the back. So he has like the guys of Slaughter on FaceTime and they're like, oh. you guys are doing it. and we're like, what is happening? Like, <laughs> just the wildest so this thing that was legit legit just supposed to be um uh, uh, like one night of us singing songs in front of our friends turned into this thing and then we did several more shows um and then yeah like slaughter saw the show like just, oh. just wild. it it was it made us laugh so hard because it's like it, with any anyone who is like a uh, uh a, a creative th- there's always like stuff that you that you work on and that you do that you're like yeah this is gonna be this <laughs> is gonna be huge right like this yeah. is gonna be huge and then nothing ever happens like nothing yep. ever happens with it that the project dies or it just doesn't work or whatever this was legitimately the opposite of that we never thought of it being anything more than like us singing in front of a few of our friends and then it just like took on this life of its own and that was when it was like it's just you know it it was one of those moments where it was like man when something works you just can't fight it because like we yeah ride you know Kari and Mary are like uh, like I'm always like oh I'm I'm like the little stepchild like they're like legit (laughs) 
you know, and they're like legit stars with fans and stuff. And I, so, so we, we didn't promote it because it was just like, let's just do this for our friends. And, and then it just, it, it, it just blew up. It, it blew up and there was like, we couldn't do anything about it. Like there was no amount of us like not making a big deal out of it that was going to not make it a big deal. It just was, you know, it, yeah. it hurt, you know? Um, and so it was, uh, it, it, it's sad because we, like you know, COVID stopped it. Like two, sure. we had like a, our final show was like two weeks or something before everything shut down before COVID. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there were like all these plans to that we were we were maybe gonna go on this like um like this metal cruise and we were gonna like oh, sing sweet. Like that. And there was like another there there was another um like festival with with all these like hair band, you know, that we were like it so there was all this stuff that like we were, you know, it again, it was it just made us laugh so much because we were just like we did not this was not supposed to blow up like this wasn't <laughs> wasn't that and then and then it did and it was so fun and like you know um i i just uh i love Cara and mary so much and 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 oh that band was so good um yeah and then and then it was like uh, you know we had to shut everything down for covid um and and then it's like we just haven't um uh, we we haven't gotten we haven't gotten back together to to do anything with it since then. Um, but who knows if COVID hadn't who happened, knows wouldn't have been traveling around uh, in a band. I don't know. <laughs> right, life's life's open. You never know. You never I know. know. Hey, we we still don't know. We could still potentially we still could could do it. I we could get back together and do another show. Uh, that's Ooh. not. That's definitely not off the table. I love that. I I love <laughs> that there there. It kind of was like a you know an ethereal answer to pure creativity. I'm gonna do this thing because I just love it. And then the universe was like, "All right, me too." Yeah. There's something there's yeah. something pure about that of just going for you know that thing inside of you. They're like, "I'm just gonna do this thing for me because I like it." And then the right people find it. Like, what are the odds? What are the odds? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the that's the beauty of creativity and i think that's why this i i, I think that's a huge reason why this um like it, it kind of blew up in the way that it did um not you know Corey's an amazing singer mary's oh, an yeah. amazing singer the the band as it, are you i'll say it like in the, oh thank, thank you thank <laughs> you i i i was like oh you guys this is sweet i i i sing harmonies and like um like tell people jokes when when everyone needs a break in between songs like that's <laughs> that's my like i know my place in the band um, that's a service but, but it is it really is uh, <laughs> there was one yeah there was one night this was the best um that there was something that was ha like something ha like a, a string popped or something from a guitar i could be making that some something happened mid show that was like we had to uh, we had to like cover, uh, sure. like time, time needed to, uh, uh there we needed there, to stall a little bit. <laughs> we needed to stall. So Carly comes over to me and she's like, I, this thing just happened. Uh, we, we can't do this next song yet. Like I, I, can you, can you take this? And I was like, Kari, I was born for these moments. Are you kidding me? <laughs> this is why you have me in the band. This Pull is why. Sunglasses from nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I was like, this is this is the moment, man. This is you know <laughs> anybody uh anybody can can sing harmony with you guys, but like, oh, these these are my these are my moments of <laughs> stand that, back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it it was just that was so so cool like a really just a beautiful thing about creativity because like you said it, it really was she just loves that band and she just wanted to do it because because of the love of it and and then you know and I think that is like what resonated with people because there was just so much love around the project that it, and it wasn't we weren't doing it for anybody else we weren't doing it for people to come and see it we weren't doing it to for it to turn into this big thing we were doing it because Kari loves this band and we love her. Like yeah. that's, that was it. That was like the, the, 
the really beautiful intention behind it. And, and uh, it was just so funny that we were like, how many times have we tried to push a project through being like, this is <laughs> so good. It's going to be amazing and nothing happens. And then this one, we, we, we couldn't have fought it turning into something. <laughs> <laughs> my god see you have these experiences that i feel like ideally will change you was there a sarah before lionel richie saying to you oh. and the after oh i need i need to know what happened like molecularly oh man no he was always that's that's the that's the beautiful thing about me and lionel richie is uh and another full circle because it was me and andrew when we were like little kids oh. that we that we we loved it. We were not, uh, I, I feel like Lionel's had like a resurgence from, from like American Idol and, and Definitely. whatever. And there's a, you know, a lot of people that are, that weren't, you know, necessarily huge fans or didn't know a lot about him that are, are like fans now because he's, he's had this, uh, resurgence, but like, no, it was always pure and legit. We just like, as 12 year olds, he was like our favorite. We, we had like a, we had burnt this CD with all of like our favorite Lionel songs and we would like listen to those. Oh, like, um, I so, love that. So no, uh, uh, there was no before and after Lionel. It's <laughs> always been. It's always been. <laughs> it was the accumulation of all of the Lionel led to that oh, moment. Yeah. And he's like, oh, yes. So you're we Sarah. <laughs> oh yeah, we did go to we we um uh Andrew and I have seen him uh, so many times in concert but uh, Love it. we did we we did go to Vegas um to to see him and so we went to a concert one night uh like a Saturday or something and and um and I was like okay uh I'm going to go like we went in, you know, it's Vegas. So, so mm -hmm. I was like something, I don't know. I was like blackjack or something. I was like, okay, I'm going to go play a blackjack game. And if I, if I win, then we're going to spend that money and we're going to stay and we're going to see him tomorrow night too. <laughs> I'm so into this right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so he was like, okay, deal. Um, so I, I, um, uh, I went and played, I won. We went, we went straight to the box office and we're like, Hey, we just saw him tonight and we want to come back tomorrow. Um, what do you got? Uh, and <laughs> she, uh, the, the woman that was there, she was like, you're not going to believe this, but like, there's, I, I literally have two tickets that just opened up that are like, like on, on the front row. And I was like, great, here we go. What? That's we're staying. Yeah. So we stayed for a second night. We, we literally had just seen him. We, stayed saw him the next night too on the front row right at the stage he like held my hand and sang during <laughs> my love like it was the best uh so yeah I think that's that's maybe my before and after like uh, Lionel has always been a part but I think like that uh, the before and after Lionel is like leading up to that moment where he like held my hand and sang uh oh because we just, like we'll never again we'll we'll never again see him like that like this was like the perfect concert so yeah uh, we've seen him since absolutely <laughs> like, sure. but, but it's not but that's that that was the magical one and i i love it was so stupid that i was like <laughs> so the most Vegas thing of like, we're going to stay and go if I win this hand. And yeah. Whatever I win, we'll spend on the tickets. Um, So it was, yeah, it was great. Oh, my God. It's like, not only did you win, but then you won, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. We wow. time won. What are the odds in Vegas hey, <laughs> at the time? <laughs> we to be, you know? And, and Lionel was meant to be for us. Ooh, for real. Something's moving in your favor. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So uh, having worked in so many different mediums now, because you've done VO, you've done commercial, you've done music, you've done all these things. Do you have like a dream left? You have like a dream gig that you're like, this is what I want? Sports was my dream. Oh. So <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Hands down. I, my, uh, a, a friend of mine and I were walking on the bike path in L.A., and she asked the same thing. We were like, well, what do you want to do now? And I was like, I, something sports. I was like, I want to like, I, I want to go back to like my sports love and right. try to close this loop. Things. <laughs> like, yeah. So, so sports uh, for sure, which is like, so this Grizzlies uh, emceeing is, is a dream come true. And uh, I, I think the only other thing 
that um I I really want is I uh I, I want to narrate um like a like a murder show like I want to um, yeah that's 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 the biggie um and that that was funny I told my agents that and they were like you know that like you know that 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 doesn't pay as much as like the, the other stuff that you do and I was like <laughs> I I didn't ask that I, I <laughs> did I stutter <laughs> I yeah I want this I don't I don't care if those episodes don't pay as much like I so I I would actually love to I, I'm a I I love mysteries I love um yeah I, I was gonna say I love crime but like I don't I don't love crime world <laughs> um, but I but I'm into like crime stories and mysteries and stuff like that and so I I think getting to like narrate one of those shows um I I would just uh it it, it would be dreamy because I I would be so interested in the material sure. that um, I think that'd be a, a really cool um project so so I'm glad I'm getting to say this aloud here because when I announced that I wanted to you know do, do something with basketball or football then like hey that happens so uh yeah i'm ready for my murder show <laughs> <laughs> my god that's crazy so then with, with this this sort of hard work that you're doing but also seems like there's some manifestation happening uh do you have any advice for like up and coming actors now yes i do um do live your life do the things Ooh. that bring you joy that I, I honestly like create the project, create the project that you want to be in. Like yeah. that, that's, that's it. And, and, and there's no, you know, um, there's, there's no way you can't control whether that project gets picked up and it's this massive hit, but the joy that you will get from creating that um, will absolutely fuel everything else that you do and, and it 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 makes you better like you know uh i i love i love that we talked about sarah and andrew and slot her yes. like because, <laughs> you know sarah and andrew was like the 20 20s version of of what you know slot her which ended up being this huge thing um you know like it, it's it's really cool like I, I I think that waiting around for someone to pay you to to do what you want to do is a waste of time and just create yeah that, that you want to do and and do it however you can like if you can't you know rent a studio and you can't you know buy all this material shoot it on your phone like you know like I, I, there's no um there's no substitute for creativity and like sitting around and having ideas um it is wonderful but there's nothing like actually like realizing one of our, those ideas and actually doing it you know yeah um so yeah i th i think that's the um you'll hone your voice you'll hone your if if comedy something you're into you'll you'll get you know tighter on on what your comedic voice is um you'll 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 flop and you'll learn that like the world doesn't end when like something's right. not. <laughs> um, yeah. And it's fun. It's fun. Like, especially if you're collaborating with one of your friends, then you're just having a really good time, but also like creating something that, that lives on the internet forever. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I, I have since added to my dream slash bucket list to try those Craven's buttermilk biscuits. Oh yeah. The I'm biscuits. Just saying. Oh, as dude. as a fellow Southerner, I know there's something about biscuits. It's in our DNA. They're just at food items specifically. It's like anywhere, everywhere. I want a biscuit all the time. I love I love biscuits so Same. much. My God. I've I've gotten to where like because uh you know um I am not uh, a a teenager any longer with the, <laughs> these uh, things cost them. now. Yeah, yeah, they cost. <laughs> so I have gotten to where I am like okay. Uh, it's just, I, I can have a biscuit on the weekend. <laughs> like I look forward to it. Like we're, you know, uh, <laughs> only four, only four. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You got, you got to do what brings you joy. Um, exactly. Exactly. We're here for a good time. Not a long time, Sarah. <laughs> for real. For real. <laughs> and just like that, we've been talking for an hour and a half, pal. You survived. I can't believe it. Look at you. Uh, 
this, no, this was really fun. Thank you for um, asking me. I, I do have a weird thing. Like when you asked me at first, I was like, what I, I you know, I, I, I literally was like, what do I have going on? That's interesting. I don't know. <laughs> you. you know, I, well, th thank you. And, and I appreciate that. You know what? And I'm going to make that as something that I'm, I'm going to give to people too of like, look at this, look at this. I had such a good time doing this. And literally when I looked at the email the first time, I was just like, I, I don't, I, I don't have anything interesting to say. Why, why would I like, <laughs> do the, you know, so, so do the thing, do the, do the thing. And, the and thing. whatever, maybe it wasn't interesting, <laughs> and I was right all along, but I still had fun doing it. So whatever. <laughs> the pleasure was all mine. Now, before yeah. I release you back into the wild, I got to ask, where can people find you online? Where can they find your stuff? Talk to me. Oh, so not on social. I'm I'm not great on social media. It's a lot of pictures of my cats. Same, um, same. Hope uh, you like yeah. hugs. Yeah, yeah. If you're into cats and um and rescue animals, that <laughs> my thing. Um, I, I'm that so cravens on um, so good on Instagram. Um, and I still I can't call it X. I, like uh, me neither. I, it's Twitter. I just can't. It's Twitter. Yep. Um, and. I'm I'm very 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 not active on that because it's like weird now. Yeah. But you know, but but yes, I, I I do I do have accounts on both of those places. <laughs> yes, that works. They can you're fi you're findable. They can find I'm you. Findable, yeah, <laughs> totally. I love it. And. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show and stay up to date on new episodes, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter and Instagram. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at brianbalance.com. There you'll find my demos, recent projects, and other stuff I'm up to. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. As speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on TeePublic to pick you up some sweet gear. And if you'd like to support the show more directly and get early releases while you're at it, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Ben, Chris, Daryl, Daz, and Victor. Your support means so much to me, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well. <laughs>